Hey guys, Chris here from BZB Express TV. Uh, today we wanted to go over how to network the BG VPTZ HSU3, available in 10X, 20X, and 30X. Uh, this little guy here, as you can see, is compact but robust with features. It's offering a local area network port, um, an HDMI connection, SDI connection, and a USB 3.0 output. If you need audio, great for microphones. We got a line in here, audio in 3.5 millimeter jack. Also have a serial connection for any of you guys looking to use uh, RS-232, RS-45 commands uh, with a joystick controller. Um, so today let's get back to what we mainly want to cover, uh, which is how do, you, how do you network this guy? How can we get this on our local area network, our subnet? Um, I'm gonna go over that with you today. Real simple, very easy overall. Uh, these cameras come with a default IP address of 192.168.1.162. So those of you who are not as familiar with the IP address world, um, the third digit there, the dot one, is technically your subnet segment. Uh, typically most of our local area networks in our homes or churches or schools, wherever this may be, are going to have some different type of third number, whether it's a dot one, a dot five, a dot twenty, a dot thirty. This essentially is the range that you need to get this camera in to match your subnet. Um, so basically what we want to do, because this has again a default IP address of 192.168.1.162, is we want to change the Ethernet setting in here, the IP address and the gateway and the DNS to match our address for our location where this is going to be streaming. So first thing you want to do is power this guy up using the power plug. Again, it's PoE. However, initially, because we're going to be doing a direct connection with a Cat5, Cat6 cable to our computer, our computers do not offer PoE capability. Typically, just the network switch does that, which has to be a PoE network switch. So make sure, if you are looking for that ability to power up the camera via a Cat5, Cat6 line, that your switch is a uh, PoE switch and not a non-PoE switch. So let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and take our Cat6 cable here. Camera's already on. I've already powered it up. And I'm going to plug this guy into the local area network port on the back. And some computers don't have uh, an Ethernet port anymore. It's slowly becoming obsolete uh, for computers because it can become slimmer and smaller. So you can always pick up a, a fancy little adapter um, like this guy here. I have a little Dell adapter. This enables me to connect to it. If it's not twisting all around on me, driving me a little nuts there. All right. So once I've got this thing connected here, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to your Ethernet adapter settings or your network settings. So you basically right click on that, um, whoops, right click on your wireless setting there. It'll say open network and internet settings. So you're going to open up that. And you're going to see a list over here on the left, status, Wi-Fi, Ethernet, dial-up, VPN. Um, you're going to want to go to your Ethernet setting there select the Ethernet tab, and go to Change Adapter Options. So this is where we're going to modify our IP address, our subnet mask, um, as well as our gateway, so our computer can talk to this camera. Basically, we need them to be able to see each other in order to make any changes to this guy here. So as you can see here, I've pulled up my Ethernet 2 properties. I'm going to select Internet Protocol Version 4 TCP IPv4. And I'm going to hit properties here so I can get into this. This is a typical by default setting, obtain an IP address automatically. This is using what's called DHCP, uh, meaning that it just automatically gets an address. Uh, your network tells it what it is. And, and basically, we need to make sure that we can change this IP address to match this one. So we need to get away from DHCP, select use the following IP address. And we're going to use 192.168, which is always the first two you're going to want to use. And then dot one. And I'm going to select a random IP host, a host number. I'm just going to say 150. So essentially, you have up to 1 through 255 for host IDs. I'm on a subnet right now that only has three devices. If you have 
basically a setup that in the future that you need to figure out what IP address you want to give this camera for your subnet. Understand there's other devices on your internet and they may have already taken that. So if you're just randomly grabbing one like I did for my computer, you could have a conflict by it could be already utilized by another device and then you're just going to have nothing but issues. There are tools out there you can use to um, make sure this doesn't happen, uh, such as Fing, uh, IP scanning tool. They're free tools you can download, just uh, Google it. And essentially what that does is it allows you to go ahead and search your network for free IP uh, addresses or free host IDs so you don't have any conflicts. So as you can see here, I've got my 192.168.1.150, that being my host ID, this being the subnet that the camera's on. 255.255.255.0 automatically uh, gets configured in there when you tap down. And we want to make sure our gateway is a 192.168.1.1. Okay, DNS, you can also do the same. All right, and we're going to hit OK here. So basically, what we're doing is changing our laptop settings to be within range of this guy so they can talk to each other again. OK. I'm going to close this guy up. I'm going to close this up. I'm going to close this up. So now my computer has this address of 192.168.1.150. My, ca my camera is 192.168.1.162. So what I want to do is basically log into this guy so I can see what's going on. So now that I've typed in my 192.168.1.162, the default IP address of the camera, as you can see I have a login screen here. Uh, default username and password is just admin admin, all lowercase. Hit enter. No, we don't need to save that right now. And you see it moves around a little bit, so this is essentially our um, preview screen. And now what I'm going to do is go into our configuration. So in order to change the IP address information, we need to go into the settings, which is under config. So here we are under config and we're going to select network and as you can see here's the default IP address. So for our scenario here in this particular room we are using a dot 30 subnet. So I'm changing the IP address and the gateway and the DNS to a dot 30. Okay, so now that I double check that, 192.168.30.162, I left the host ID the same. Again, I don't have a bunch of devices in here, so I know there is no .162 uh, device on this network, so I'm good to use that one over again. And I'm going to hit save. Okay, and once it's saved, I'm going to close this guy up. And now, I can plug my camera into our network. Before I do that, I'm going to cycle it. You always nice to power cycle it to reboot so the IP address takes place. So I actually don't need this power cord anymore. This power cord is eliminated since I have PoE. Now that my address is configured, Again, we did that because the computer doesn't provide power like the network switch here does. Give that guy a second to turn on. There she goes. So you're going to let it do a little sequence here. It's going to do a circle and then uh, it's going to take an extra maybe 20 seconds, 30 seconds for it to actually uh, start up. Once it's started up like that, you want to go back into your computer settings and you want to go back to that ethernet on the left and change adapter options again. 
The reason being is because our computer is still on that other subnet, that dot one that the camera originally was by default. Now we want to put it back the way it was, which is DHCP, which means it's gonna obtain the IP address and the DNS information automatically so you don't have to do anything else. Once you've selected these obtain IP address and DNS, you can go ahead and okay. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and open up, in this case, uh, Microsoft Edge. 192.168.30.162. So what changed there again is a dot .30 versus a dot .1. Now, as you can see, I've got my login screen again. That means we successfully changed the IP address information on the camera. Hit never at this point. You can hit yes if you need to, if you want to save your password. Back to config. We're just going to double check all our stuff here. And boom, there it all is. So basically, that's how you change an IP address for the BG VPTZ HSU3. Very simple overall. Um, this is basically what you need to do in order to get any type of IP control or to be able to stream to Facebook, YouTube, um, any of those options that you're looking to uh, stream to for your members or your customers um, or your associates. And other than that, folks, that is pretty much it. Relatively simple, but if you got any questions, feel free to hit us up here at uh, BZB Gear, BZB Express. Our technical support department is always ready and able to answer your questions as well as jump into your laptop if you need a little remote support. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It's always appreciated uh, for all the hard work we do here. Thanks a lot. See you later.